Welcome back to Nick Lynch's Comic Corner, classic slash non-classic. This is episode number two, uh, 374, and double shot number 299. Yes, double shot 299. Okay. Two X-Men trades. First up, here's nostalgia for you. X-Men 92, Volume 1, The World is a Vampire. Yeah, that's the name. Of, it's an odd name for it. It's a cheesy name for a title. It's written by Chris Sims and Chad Bowers. With artwork by Attila Fermatia, I think that's how you pronounce the guy's name, who, who did the first four issues. And the last issue is done by Corey Hampshire. Now, this book is in the, the TV show universe, basically established by um, the 90s X-Men show, which basically Spider-Man is in this universe, too, that series in this universe. And I think the Fantastic Four as well. Yeah, those three series from the same universe. The Iron Man series, not confirmed. But with this book, we get a chance to see uh, some characters who... I don't remember who actually were on the show. Like, uh, the character Exodus. I don't think he was on the show, but yeah. it The, sh the comic itself is kind of set... After the events of the show, but if it is, why is Charles Xavier back on Earth? Because at the end of the series, he's off in space. My guess is this, this series takes place about a couple years later. Jubilee is a starring character in pretty much all the issues. And why is it called World is a Vampire? Excuse me, there's a very simple reason for that. Dracula isn't here. No joke, Dracula isn't here. And he looks, uh, let's see, what does he look like? Yeah, uh, Maverick shows up in here. Uh, Mega Red shows up in here as well. Um, along with the uh, People's Protectorate. Yeah, it's, it, it's a Russian superhero group, which is comprised of... You're not going to believe this, if I can find the page. Uh, it is comprised of Ursa Major, Darkstar, Bostic, Red Guardian, and Omega Red. Yeah, these guys. Uh... Currently, this is the Winter Guard, but Omega Red is not part of this lineup, but everyone else is. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Bishop, there's reference to him being part of... Um, uh, there's also this new villain who's here called Alpha Red. Let's see, what's a good picture of him? Yeah, it is... Uh, let's see. Here he is. This is Alpha Red. He's a new villain. He's oh, he, Get this. He's a son of... Dracula, and he's Janice. Basically, what they did is they took the character Janice from the Marv Wolfman issues of Tomb of Dracula and put him in the universe. And we also see the first in-universe experience of the Ferris Twins. Andreas and Andreas Stryker. Yeah, the two siblings who were involved in incest. No joke, these two are an incestuous relationship. Yeah. And Marvel's okay with this. And yet they couldn't okay the original origins or the idea that Chris Hammond had for Nightcrawler. Yeah. And, uh, let's see. If you want to know what Count Dracula looks like in this continuity, well, here you go. Yep, that's the way he looked in the 1980s. And pretty much, yeah. You see this little image right here? Yeah. That's actually the cover from X Uncanny X-Men Annual number 6. So, apparently, that annual is canon with this universe as well. Besides canon with 616, it's canon with the regular universe as well. And also... Uh, plus, they have two people who actually are part of the um, the Axeta group right here. There is... You Go Girl. Who I think also supposed to be Dead Girl as well. Mm-hmm. And by the end of this, basically, everybody except Dracula is cured of their vampirism by the very end. And Dracula is like the only vampire left. Now, there's one person, I'm not going to mention his name. He actually dropped the book when, when Jumbly was turned vampire in here. I'm like, that was stupid. Just because Jumbly was turned into a vampire in here as well does not mean that you need to drop the book. I mean, how is this not interesting? This is the Jumbly of the 90s TV show. Yeah, she's a vampire in 616. So what? Does it matter to me? No, because it's a new idea they have for her. Even though some people don't like it. 
Look, she lost her powers, so they want to give her some powers again, so they made her a vampire, and she can do. She can actually can stay in sunlight because she actually took a blood transfusion from uh, Wolverine before he died. There. Yeah, but this this is awesome. Really good book, ten out of ten. Uh, if you're a fan of of the '90s TV show, you would love this. But there's some bad news. This book was canceled after only 10 issues. This book only contains the first 5 out of 10. I don't know why. This, and get this. This series ended 4 months ago. Yes, 4 months ago this series ended. And now we're reviewing the first trait. The first of... This is actually the second trait because I never reviewed the, the previous volume of the series. Which was a 4 issue miniseries coming from Secret Wars. As of currently, of, the, of all the series that continue from Secret Wars... Uh, there were many series for Secret Wars. Only two are still being published right now. And that's uh, Amazing Spider-Man New Year Vows, which I believe this one is six issues in right now. And there's also Old Man Logan, which was an awesome series. And it's still publishing right now. The Southern Kentucky is leaving the book after issue 24 and they're changing right after issue 25. All right. Next up is X-Men Infernal Crossovers. This is simply the other Infernal books that basically ties the crossover that we're not collecting the, excuse me, the X-Men uh, Infernal uh, two volumes. This book contains Avengers 298 to 300, Fantastic Four number 324 through 22, 324, Amazing Spider-Man 311, 313, Spectacular Spider-Man 146, 148, Web of Spider-Man uh, 40 to 48, and Daredevil 262, 63 and 65. Uh, Walt Simonson does the three Avengers issues. He writes them, not draws, or just writes them. Uh, Steve Eckerhart does Fantastic Four. Dave Michelini does. Um, the Amazing Spider-Man issues. Jerry Conaway does Spectacular Spider-Man Web Spider-Man because he was doing the books at the same time. Um, and in a sense, he does Daredevil. The artist for these books, uh, McFarlane does Amazing Spider-Man, obviously. Um, let's see. For, for let's see. For, um, for Avengers, is John Bushma, who actually is a very good artist. I actually like this guy's artwork. It is really, really good. Um, yeah. That's who does that. Um, Eckerhart, who does Fantastic Four. Here, uh, it's Keith Pallard. Yeah, really good artist. I should point out Tommy Jr. does the Daredevil issues because he was he was the artist at that point. Let's see. Also, I should point out though in these three issues. Uh, sorry about that. Mantis returns to the Marvel Universe first time in over a decade at this point because she even hopping on because when Eckerhart left Marvel he took in the DC Universe uh, they took some other company and made her some other character uh, then she brought her back here yeah no joke let's see if I can get a good image of Mantis yeah Mantis returns to the Marvel Universe. And she stays here. She, she doesn't wear this attire anymore. No, she wears a completely different attire. Uh, plus, also, we see the appearance by this guy here. That is the nameless one. He is a creation of Roy Thomas. He first appeared in the first issue of Defenders. Uh, yeah. Um, amazing experiment, obviously. David Lee, Tom McFarland. Um, the... The... Spectacular Spider-Man issues. Th these are drawn by Sal Bushma. This is actually my least favorite artist in here. I don't really like... I have no disrespect to Sal Bushman. He's an okay artist, but he's not my favorite. I like his earlier stuff than this one. But from 8, it, his, it gets worse than the 90s. I mean, look at this. It's just so bizarre. It's so jarring to go from Tom McFarlane to this. Wow. That is something. And probably the uh, really another really good artist in here... Uh, Alex Salvik, who does the two Web of Spider-Man issues in here. I mean, look at this artwork. This is freaking gorgeous. Yeah, I should point out though that the three amazing, the three Spider-Man books are all connected. Yeah, they had this strange thing where even wasn't a crossover, they still had the books connected. Yep. And um, yeah, the Daredevil issues are done by Jarmia Jr. Actually, uh, this is not too bad artwork. Uh, it's not as bad as some people think it is, but it's actually pretty good. I can understand exactly what's going on uh, when it comes to this artwork. And we see appearances in this book. We see the first appearance of Typhoid Mary. Yeah, first time she appears in this universe. Yeah, th these three books are actually her first appearance. 
I believe it is. Um, we also see Karen Page, the Black Widow, the Arranger, and, and Will Smith the Kingpin. Oh, if you want to know how John Romita Jr. draws the Kingpin... Yeah, that's how he draws her. Let's see. Let's see. Where is where is Mr. Fisk? Uh, let's see. What's a good picture of him? He's really good at drawing Wilson Fisk. So at least he's not showing disrespect to a, a character who was created by his father. Yeah. John Romita Sr. created the Kingpin with Stan Lee back in Amazing Spider-Man 50. Which I know that my friend Edgar basically is getting really close to... Um, issue 50. I'm trying to find a good picture of him. A good picture of the Kingpin. Uh, no, that's not a good one. Uh, I know he's in here. I know I saw a really good picture of him. Drawn by John Romita Jr. Yeah, that is him. Yep. Actually, to me, it doesn't look too bad. Um, what is your guys' opinion of this depiction of how John Romita Jr. draws the Kingpin? I mean, you can see him. Uh, I'd say out of all the characters that he draws, Kingpin, he, he gets the most respect to him. Yeah, he gets some shadowing of him. I mean, it's fine. He's the Kingpin. He's the Kingpin of crime. But, yeah. Um, these are real. There's even a bonus story they throw in here, which is um, actually printed from the from the Avengers 300 issue. <laughs> yeah, which features uh, Loki uh, taking on uh, basically... Uh, a Loki sort of retelling the events of Avengers number one. Mm -hmm. And it's written by uh, Ralph Macho and Walt Simonson. Uh, I think Walt Simonson does the artwork in here. Yeah, this is Walt Simonson's artwork. Now, for the amazing. Now, for the Avengers issues. Now, the Avengers prior to the start of this very crossover, the Avengers disbanded in issue 297. They came back a couple issues later. 298 is a spotlight issue on Edwin Jarvis. It's him fighting uh, a robot. Yeah, him fighting a robot and protecting a gorgeous woman while he's doing it. Now, I'm not sure exactly how old Jarvis is supposed to be. He looks like a guy probably in his 40s, I'd say. I'd say late 30s, early 40s. It's never really said exactly how old he is. Uh, of course, the captain shows up in here as well. Why do I say the captain? Because that's who it is. It's Steve Rogers as the captain. Though pe Some people commonly mistake this him, uh, call him... Uh, U.S. agent because John Walker wears his costume. Yeah, uh, that is not U.S. agent. That's not Steve Rogers' name. That is the captain. An identity he assumed for two years. Now, the new lineup of the Avengers from this point onwards, for about the next couple years, it is these five people, Mr. Fantastic and this woman of Fantastic Four, who actually were retired at this point, uh, Thor, and Gilgamesh, the Forgotten One. He's one of the Eternals. Yep, this was the lineup. Now, when, when I look at the way Captain America is drawn, even though it's drawn, drawn differently, the pose is very similar to how he was depicted on, uh, uh, I think it was uh, Avengers number four. I should also point out that this trait also includes the original cover of what, um, uh, what, what the artist was going to go for. This is Peter Standish. This is actually the original cover art he wanted to do for the cover. It's actually really good. I mean, the only reason why he had the change is because, well, uh, Gilgamesh was actually going to wear this outfit here, but he had to change it. And as for this, he really wanted to draw Steve Rogers like this, but because he was the captain at that point, he had to draw him as the captain. Yeah. But, but please, people. He's the captain. Not U.S. agent. Yeah, he wears U.S. agent's costume. There's a reason for that. He wore the costume first, and then when John Walker took up the costume, he became U.S. agent. Why do people always get this confused? Why? Because an Ultimate Alliance of costume is called the U.S. agent costume? Yeah, he wore it when he was the captain for two years in Captain America. From issues 325 to 350. He wore it for two years. And then he got being Captain America. It's a great storyline that Marvel did put into trade uh, a few years ago. I highly recommend you track it down so you know exactly what I'm talking about. And, it, and the trade is called The Captain, not U.S. Agent. There is a trade called U.S. Agent for Captain America, but it's not Steve Rogers. It's John Walker as U.S. Agent. I have to get that out there to get that confusion out there, um, out of there. But 
This book is really good. Uh, the the amazing the, the Spider-Man issues is simply like ma mainly the main villain of the uh, the first issue is is, Mephist is Mysterio, and then the rest of them are Top Goblin, with also this happening. Green Goblin versus Hobgoblin. Yeah, and I know this happened in the Spider-Man animated series, except that of the two, Hobgoblin was Jason McIndale at that point, and Green Goblin was Norman. But in the comic, it is Jason McIndale and uh, Harry. But in 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 the in, and in Superior Spider-Man, they did try this, where they did have Norman as the Green Goblin, and they tried to have it where. Uh, they kind of implied it was Roger Kingsley he was fighting as the Hobgoblin, but they changed the reveal that it was actually his butler all along who was fighting him. So, yeah. Oh, and by the way, Hobgoblin hasn't. Uh, his, his last known appearance was actually in Spider Woman, uh, in case you're wondering. And Harry is a supporting character currently in Amazing Spider Man. But, yeah. All the issues in here are good. Despite Anacente, basically, for a lot of people, to be hit or miss, uh, her data of her own is actually pretty good. With the exception of one issue, it's issue 247. It's not very good. The only good about the issue is the artwork. Because it's Daredevil basically acting completely out of character. There's no supporting characters. It's just Daredevil at this random community. And, and at one point, he nearly hangs somebody. But this book, just good. Basically, Daredevil spends like the first couple issues in here, two, two three issues, basically in the hospital. And apparently he's developing an attraction to Typhoid Mary for some reason, even though at this point he's still supposedly dating Karen Page. But all the issues here are good. Uh, what, now, the only book that has the very bad artwork is uh, Spectacular Spider-Man. Sal Bushma, his 80s and 90s style artwork, it, it, 90s was the worst when it came to him. It's like, the guy's kind of lazy when it comes to artwork. So... I'm going to give a point off of that. I, I would I would normally get this 10 because the writing here is so good. But I'm going to get this a 9 out of 10. Good. Alright, that's it for this episode. Stay tuned for the next episode, which is episode uh, 375. And it's not going to be double shot. It's going to be a single shot. And we'll talk about Superman. Okay? Until then, I will see you there. Bye.